How did the rose ever open? How did the rose ever open its heart and give to this world all of its beauty? It felt the encouragement of light against its being. Otherwise, we all remain too frightened. Jonathan, make sure you get married in the next 15 years because, you know, Poppy's getting old. My name is Jonathan Grassi. I grew up in Queens, New York, and I've been a massage therapist for 13 years. Keep running. Run down the block. I wanted to be a magician as a little kid, and I saved up and I bought the big magic book for like 40 bucks when I was like seven or six, and it arrived, and I was so excited, and you know, I loved it, but it also felt like, you know, I'm still kind of like... It's not really magic. <laughs> it's it's kind of magic. You know, I want the real thing. When I was in college, my parents went through a divorce. And that was a time of real disconnection and, and isolation for me, for my family. But I went back to school and I didn't want to keep studying what I was studying. You know, what I wanted to address that sense of loss. Following that, you know, I received my first massage. Uh, and then, you know, three months later, I enrolled in massage school because, you know, out of all the things, here was magic. You know, here was the, 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 real, the real deal. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm going to let the way of right, the heart. Right, you did it Yeah. Then... So Jonathan wrote me an email. I must have read this email a hundred times <laughs> and brought it to every class. <laughs> and I cried when I read it because he was a 19-year-old male from New York City. And his sensitivity as a 19-year-old, he said something like, this work seems too good to be true. Like, could it really be genuine? The students would be doing pairing up and all of a sudden, why is Jonathan's table? There's always somebody crying. And really, like, showing up in a way to themselves they've never showed up. And so the teachers would discuss this and say, what, what is this man? Who is this guy? Who is, what is he doing different than other students? We actually studied him. As, as instructors, we studied him. I'm gonna miss all of you. My classmates honor me with um, choosing me to speak at, at uh, our ceremony. And uh, that was also a huge, huge gift. A friend of mine has a massage school in Boulder called Phenomenal Touch, and Leslie Bruder is her name, and she asked me to do a demonstration for her students so they could get a sense of how to work with the fluid nature of the body. showed us how to move the body in water. And my teacher, Leslie, 
wanted us to take that sense of moving the body in water and bring it to the massage table. The term watsu comes from uh, water shiatsu, and it was developed in Harbin Hot Springs in California by a man named Harold Bell. And then the underwater work, it's called water dance, and, and it was developed in Germany. Uh, and in German, you, you say Wasser tanzen, water dance. And so it's two different traditions that then came together. The temperature is the most important, so 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the outside temperature of the body. To me, the water, dropping into the water, is like dropping down into the deeper parts of ourselves. Well, imagine like the warm sun. That'd be like the heat in the water. And then maybe like swinging in a hammock <laughs> all at the same time. And then feeling like a fish where the waves are taking you and moving you. He was off on his own now. You know, he's out of the school, and he was doing his massages, and he knew what he had to offer. And he knew, finally, he knew he was good. Like, he got it. But he wasn't making a living. I worked everywhere on the planet. I probably worked 17 different places. I worked at chiropractic clinics looking at x-rays. I worked at spas in Estes Park. I worked at salons. I worked at uh, tanning salons. I worked at... Um, medical clinics and, uh, you know, nothing, Boulder is so saturated. Uh, the Boulder College of Massage Therapy, highest per capita massage therapist in the world. So eventually, uh, over that long journey, I wound up at a franchise uh, for, for what it gave me at that time, which was steady work. One of the most boundary, careful, respectful people I've ever met just showed up at my house. He just burst into tears and he said, I'm sorry that I'm just dropping in on you like this and I know it's not normal, but I am, I don't know where to go. I did everything right. I, I went through the program, I, I flourished, I developed this work, people love my work, but I have like almost no clients, I have almost no money and I'm not making a living. So what do I do? I moved from New York to Boulder. Mm -hmm. Do I leave? Do I go back to New York? Do I give up massage and just say, well, that was a great experience? What do I do? Living by myself at uh, Boulder Canyon in a house by myself. I had never lived by myself before. I would get groceries after work. I was working at a franchise and it was you know, in the middle of the woods. And if you got out of the house and stood on the roof, you could look out over the Continental Divide. You just sit there and the silence is just breathtaking. <laughs> So often with healers, we'll see what we think of as the, the journey of the wounded healer. So the, the wounded healer archetype matches suffering with capacity. That when we transform that suffering, then we have a huge capacity to, to give to others. 
And then beyond that, the work that I'm exploring is how can we support your sense of uh, psycho-emotional uh, well-being through touch and to be a guide so that we have more language around something that can be, you know, a little bit hard to describe. Clients report that that gives them such a sense of, of liberation and that's why I named you know, my approach Bodywork for Liberation. It's a much better place to practice drumming. <laughs> The house sold because I was renting it. And so that uh, was like a kicking out of the nest. And so I must have been ready because I moved down into Boulder. And the day that I left that house, I met Mindy. Yeah, it was very unexpected, actually. He showed up at um, one of my best friend's house and they know each other very well. And I had never met him before. And so, um, yeah. But the caveat was that I had a plane ticket in hand, a one-way plane ticket to India when I met him. And so I was like, wow, you're really amazing. And I have this project I'm doing in India and I don't know when I'm coming home. I was also working in the slum communities in Delhi and it was just hard to see for the first time. And of course, Wi-Fi is horrible, but he and I were actually able to like write emails to each other and cross our fingers that it would send before the Wi-Fi cut out. And so there was a way that actually, I think we really got to know each other quite well and pretty deeply because of that distance. I'm gonna get your kidneys and adrenals. Yeah, you can start to see like what we look for in Chinese medicine is we want to see the same color in all the cups and we want to see, we don't want to see any splotchiness or anything like that. In Chinese medicine, we're always looking in terms of the movement of energy and when energy gets stuck is where we feel pain. So then you do some acupuncture, some moxa, some cupping, whatever, and energy's moving again and you feel great, you don't feel anything. And emotionally the same is true. If there's uh, some PTSD, so we don't diagnose that particularly in Chinese medicine because we're looking at it in terms of energy, right? Same thing, we don't say, oh, you're depressed. We say, no, your energy is stuck and it's stuck like this in this pattern. We call them patterns. Perfect. Yeah, so. Little bit of stagnation around your kidneys but everything else looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Does it all feel okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all the working hard. Mm -hmm. There was one point in my life when uh, all I had was my treatment room and a really nice friend who let me sleep on his couch. That can make it hard to have a home and that can make it hard to uh, run a family. To me, massage therapists often do provide this foundational service, and yet they need two or even three jobs often. You know, it's not congruent to, to what I believe uh, the gift that we give. And so my, my journey has been to keep my dedication, uh, even in the face of such hardship, to keep believing in the medicine of touch. And so I saved up my money and I owned nothing. I mean, I had barely any assets at the time. And so I wound up buying this $700 table, which was totally ridiculous. And it was the most expensive thing I owned for probably 10 years. <laughs> and I was, so, I was so committed. I wanted it you know, from the beginning. I didn't want to take cut any corners. And I wanted to offer the most premium 
exceptional experience on all levels. Here we are with Eric Brown doing preparation for the World Massage Championship. You know, I think one of the things I'm always, no matter how many times I've received body work from Jonathan, it's always the initial touch connection movement. It's like, oh, okay, this is not just a <laughs> massage. This is something. And when I was preparing for the World Championship in Massage, you know, he and I would meet and I'd work on him for you know, hours just, just perfecting everything I wanted to perfect. And he would be on the table and I'd film it and then we'd do a replay and we'd be like, oh, let's see this. Let's try this. Let's experiment. Then I would do something that was like totally crazy. And he'd be like, ah, and <laughs> i put it back down. Also, it seems like you have to get yourself into position. And <laughs> 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 we'd figure it out again, work it over, and then get it. And he'd be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But then we're going to like, like, uh, gonna Titanic. Happen. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> 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 Massage therapists are very often alone in small uh, clinics, uh, small practices. Um, so they need to get out to get some inspiration. And it was a very strange idea, you know, a championship of massage, people are competing, you know, how does that even work? But the more I learned about it, the more excited I was for the, the ability to see what massage is all over the world. tradition has their own version of massage therapy and it's kind of attuned to their own culture. Even the ancient Egyptians you can see on the hieroglyphics where they're doing something called connective tissue therapy and they were doing it you know 4,000 years ago. I am Christina Sumarni Blay Amadou Arzid, and I am from Suriname originally, born in Suriname, and at the age of 18, I went to Holland. I got into massage like when I was maybe five, six, or seven. I basically had the bamboo in Suriname, <laughs> like playing with it, eating the bamboo, and never thought I was uh, able to do to massage with it. Even I'm using the bamboo, I have to hear, I have to feel, I have to see through my bamboo. My name is Damian Leszczyński and I'm from Poland. I met Jonathan here in this place and Jonathan performed on me and then I knew, you know, it's uh, that's gonna be metal here, you <laughs> know? This guy, it's like out of this place. Specifically in mine uh, approach, I use uh, transducers, vibrational speakers. I use uh, virtual reality. So when people are facing down on the table, I have attached VR into the face cover. So they're like lying above the ocean. So we have this incredible feeling, you know, visualization, physical touch and vibration. One of my clients uh, was a deaf client. And I was thinking, you know, how I could make this happen for him, you know, to feel this music on my headphones, because before I had just headphones. 
and then I, you know, figured out this kind of uh, speakers and I touched them under the mic table. And after the session with this boy, you know, a lot of things changed, you know, and then I realized this is, this is it. I feel awesome. I've seen probably 30 different techniques that are just totally blow my mind from you know chisel and hammer to bamboo to chair massage, unlike anything I've ever seen, flipping people around. It's just it's just incredible. Thousands of people upon thousands of people have been in my hands. And that taught me something. I, I learned from that. I learned about suffering. I learned about what we're all going through here together. And I learned how pain and behavior, how pain and our society, how, how I, can, I can feel it. It's, it's not an idea. I can feel the suffering. I can feel it in my hands. We said to Jonathan, um, we'd like you to lead an exercise in heart opening. So he took those principles and presented this exercise called the rose he bought a closed and an open rose. That's right, the first time I did it, I remember that. Put on beautiful music and, you know, he said, look at each other, you, you're a butt. And I saw that experience of unfolding as, as the light, that the presence of the other person in that healing space creates the ability for the body to unfold and then therefore for your whole being to start to unfold. He didn't just learn the work and walk away. He became an artist of touch and kept painting.
underneath anything that I feel. It's all goodness. And so I have this insight into our nature as good beings. <laughs> and so what I can bring is the wisdom of the the pain that I felt and that the people I've worked with have transformed time and again. And that your worth, your worth is unshakable. Your worth is unshakable. You know, what you've done for me and what you do for so many is that that chance of a second chance uh, in their hearts and in their life. and. So open again and to heal and to, you know, you never give up hope for for any of us. And uh, you're amazing. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's pretty rare, mm -hmm. and I really count myself fortunate to have this guy in my life. Amazing spirit, you know, uh, that's. That's the people I would love to work with. There's just this softness and genuine aspect about him that he truly sees you. Thank you for coming in for a session today. <laughs> Drink lots of water.